Good turkey calling is very important. You've heard me say over uh, the years on different videos that you always should improve on your turkey calling. Every year you should at least try to learn something, whether it's whines, whistles, maybe better yelps, soft calling, maybe better clucks and purrs. You know, sometimes it just takes really effective and good calling to get that turkey into gun range. But with that said, let me, uh, let me say this. You've heard the old saying that says, it separates the men from the boys. And that's really an old saying that just is saying that you have two classes of people trying to do the same thing. One's just a little bit better than the others. I think what separates the men from the boys in turkey hunting, and some of you may disagree with this, and, and that's fine, but this is just my opinion based on a lot of years of turkey hunting. What I think what separates a lot of the men from the boys is really not so much calling, it's learning turkey behavior. If you're a good caller, let's say you're a great caller, outstanding caller, and you can call a lot better than your buddy down the road or maybe some guy on public land, you know, maybe at the next gate down, but you can out call the, you can just out call the dickens out of him. And he's not a great caller, but he, he sounds pretty good, but you're a lot better. And let's say you just don't really know turkey behavior as well as he does. I guarantee you, he's going to kill more turkeys than you will. Turkey behavior is so important, and I think it's really probably more important than, than calling. Because if you know, if you understand and know turkey behavior, you'll be able to play the ultimate chess game, I call it, with them gobblers. Now, I'm not a chess player, but they say a good chess player that plays chess, it's a game of thinking, and you have to think three or four moves ahead of your opponent. You kind of already have to know and read what he's going to do and try to think ahead of his next move. In a lot of ways, that's what you're doing when you're hunting a gobbler and doing it every year effectively. You've got to learn behavior. You've got to learn and understand why they do the things they do. Now, we'll never be able to figure out you know, a gobbler 100%. He's a wild animal. And nobody will ever be able to figure out why they do things, what they do, as far as every day. But I do believe we can narrow it down a lot of times. If we know turkey behavior, we can listen to a gobbler, find out what he's doing, and generalize and kind of know because of experience how to hunt that turkey. In this video, I'm going to give you three different turkeys that you're going to run into sometime in your spring season, maybe not this year, maybe not next year, but sometime in your turkey hunting experience, you're going to run into these turkeys. And if you've experienced uh, any of these and you've turkey hunted any amount of time, you're going to understand where I'm going and you're going to, uh, oh, you're going to say, oh yeah, I've, I've had them before. But we're going to talk about three different turkeys that you're going to encounter and how to hunt them effectively. Now, in other videos past, you've heard me talk about reading a gobbler's gobble. And what do I really mean by that? Well, I'm talking about just sitting, being patient, and listening to him gobble before you run in and try to hunt him. Listen to how he's gobbling. And a lot of times, just by the way he's gobbling, you can tell uh, kind of what kind of turkey out of these three he's going to be. Now, you're going to find them gobblers. That's just classic hunt. You know, you, you to set up, you start calling, he's just going to come in. He's just, he just looking to get shot. <laughs> you know, he, he just he's that on fire and he's wanting to, you know, he's wanting that hen. So he comes in we all like that turkey. And, you know, we all love to hunt that turkey. And every once in a while we get lucky and find one, but usually you're going to find probably one of these three that I'm talking about, uh, when you get into the spring season. And if you don't know turkey behavior, a lot of old boys that can call good and that's good old turkey hunters, as far as in their mind about calling and, and got all the right equipment and everything, they're going to get skunked by these gobblers because they don't understand behavior. Number one, we're going to talk about the push and pull gobbler. Now, this is a turkey that you're going to encounter that when you push in, he's going to pull away. And what, and what I mean is, is you set up, let's say you set up and, and, uh, and you start calling. You hear him down there gobbling, you know, which is, which is great. You set up 100 yards maybe or so, and you set up, you start calling. Man, boy, he gobbles back. And you think, all right, he's coming in. Any, not, any time now, we're going to see that old redhead, and we're going we're, you know, to be able to get a shot. But it don't happen, because you know what happens? You move into 100, you set up, and then all of a sudden, as you push into 100, he goes back to 120, 30, 40, 50 yards. You, you make a second move. You maybe push in 20, 30, 40 more yards. You set up again. Then all of a sudden you push in, he pulls back another 20, 30, 40 yards. And every time you move in, 
it seems like he gets further, but he's still gobbling. And he's really fired up. And it confuses you because you think, man, he's so fired up. I don't know why they start getting on. Just come in here so I can shoot him because he's gobbling at everything I say. I mean, you could touch a call and he'll gobble, but he pulls away from you. Well, if you understand turkey behavior, you'll understand that that's probably, in my opinion, that's probably a two-year-old turkey or a three-year-old turkey, probably two, that's been whooped all up and down them ridges. He's ready. He's wanting a hen really bad, and that's why he's answering you. But he's not allowed to come in because he's already been whooped by a bigger gobbler, so he's a subordinate gobbler. Now, he's still gobbling. He's still answering you, and it, it'll confuse you, and you'll sit there and just keep calling, calling, calling until he finally walks off and gets tired of you. And then you go back to the truck and go, man, what happened? You know, I don't understand. That turkey was so fired up. Well, here, here's, here's how you hunt that push and pull gobbler. When I find a gobbler, when I move in, he pulls back and he's still gobbling at me. I will shut up calling. And, and if I can, you know, it depends on where you're hunting and it depends on if you got a lot of room to, to, to move on. If, if, I, if I'm hunting and I got room to, to roam and I can get on the other side of him, I'll quit calling. I'll back out. I'll use the terrain. I'll, I'll try to get on the other side of him and never make a sound because he ain't going nowhere. He's waiting for that hen to come to him. He's waiting for you to come to him. So he ain't going anywhere unless something blows him out of there. He's going to stay right there all day long, you know, until he gets tired and, he go, and he's just going to keep doing the same thing. So I'm, I'm just going to shut up. And I'm going to go around, I'm going to get on the other side of him, and then I'm going to start working him. But I'm also going to switch sounds on him. And when I say switch sounds, don't use the same mouth call. Don't use the same box call you've been using. Switch sounds. Use a different tone. You know, whatever you choose. But get on the other side of him without him seeing you and start working him with a different tone, different frequency. You know? And a lot of times that's all it takes. And man, once you get on that side of him, on the other side, he'll he, a lot of times he'll just run right into you and kill him. But because you're where you're at, and the, and maybe the the tone that you're using sounds like a, a a hen that he's used to hearing around there, but he's got a big, but she's got a big gobbler with him. He wants he's gobbling. He wants you to come. But he's just not allowed. So that's a subordinate turkey, probably two, three-year-old turkey that's just been whooped, and he's not going to come in. You can push and pull all day long. So you got to move. You got to use the train. Shut up calling. Don't open your mouth until you get set up on the other side of him. Then set up, start calling. A lot of times he'll come running right into you. That's how you kill a push and pull turkey. Now, the second gobbler we want to talk about is what I call the roadrunner gobbler. Now, you're kind of hunting the same way as you do the push and pull gobbler, but this is a turkey that... You know, he's talking to you in the tree, you set up, maybe you set up in the dark, you see him up in a tree, or maybe you're 75, 80 yards back, you can't see him, but he's up in a tree, he's talking to you, he's gobbling, I mean, he's double gobbling, he's doing all this good stuff, and you think, man, he's going to hit the ground, he's going to come up here, and we're going to be back at the truck by, you know, in, in an hour, and we're going to, you know, be having breakfast, you know, <laughs> early, but he hits the ground, he's still gobbling, man, you're up there, and you're talking to him, you know, you're doing your thing. Hits the ground, you hear him gobble, but he just keeps walking away from you. Every time you call, he gobbles, but he's a little bit further. You call again, he gobbles, and he's a little bit further. He just keeps walking away from you, but he gobbles every time. This is what I call the roadrunner turkey. He's interested. He keeps gobbling. He wants you to, you know, he, he's, hey, I'm here, I'm here, but he just keeps walking away from when you. I, when I encounter a turkey like that, for whatever reason, he just wants to be somewhere. Now, he may be an older turkey. This don't mean he's a subordinate turkey, and, you know, that doesn't mean that he ain't that he's not a big, you know, four or five year old turkey. He's just got a place in his mind he wants to go for whatever reason. He's got a place. Maybe it's a strut zone. Maybe it's the corner of a field where he goes, you know, picks up hens for whatever, you know, for whatever reason, that's where he wants to be. But you're back here. He wants to be there. You got to be where he wants to be. Now, if you have an ideal of which way he's going, you scout the land, you kind of already know, Maybe there's a field out there. Maybe there's a flat out there. You want to stop calling. You want to use the train again. If you can, get down in the creek ditch, get under a hill, get under a ridge. If he's here, you get under it. You go down a holler. I don't care if what you have to do. You get around. If you have to go 30 minutes out of the way, you go back, make a big circle. Try to get where you think that turkey wants to be at. But do it quick. Don't try to make a lot of noise, even though it's kind of hard. But you want to get in front of him and never make a sound. Once you get to where you think he's headed, then you set up and you start calling. And a lot of times he'll run right into you. I've done this so many times before. Usually, if there's a big field out 
in the direction he's going, that's usually where he wants to go to strut and pick up hens. So if I know that, I'm going to use the train, get around on him, not call. And once you get closer to where you think he's going, you really want to, you know, just take it real simple, you know, slow, you know, just move through there real quiet. You know, check, make sure you don't see him out there anymore. If you don't set up when you're in front of him, a lot of times when you start calling, now he's he's in front of you. He's, he's here. And boy, it don't take long for him to come bust it right into you. That's the Roadrunner turkey. He just wants to be somewhere. Usually it's a strut zone for whatever reason he wants. And, and he wants you to follow him. Instead of following him, you get around on him, set up. A lot of times you'll kill that turkey. It's turkey behavior. You got to learn this stuff. The third gobbler we're going to talk about is the toughest one out of all three. Boy, this is a tough turkey right here, but I call him the sanctuary turkey. This is a turkey that has already gotten his strut zone, and he's just going to stay there. And I, when I say strut zone in the sanctuary, he's going to stay within a 40 to 50 yard, 20, 40, 50 yard area, and he just ain't leaving. Now, he's going to gobble back at you. Every time you're back here 100, 150 yards, he going to gobble every time you hit a call. And you think, boy, his turkey's going to come rip-roaring in. He's really fired up. He's even double gobbling at me. He's just going to break and he's going to come up here just like they do on television. I'm going to kill him. But it don't happen because you keep calling and he stays in one spot. Well, how do you kill this turkey? Well, this is a tough one. I mean, this is, this is a really tough one because this turkey, you can't really rely so much on calling as you do on your woodsmanship. This is where it pays to learn how to use the woods to your advantage. What separates men from the boys in turkey hunting a lot of times is not so much, like I said, calling. It's how good they can work the timber and work the woods. If they can't slip and crawl and move on turkeys, then they're probably not going to kill as many turkeys as the guy that can. So when you find this turkey in his sanctuary, this is a turkey usually you, you, know, you get up in the daytime, maybe 10, 11 o'clock up in the day. He's been with some hens. He's already bred them. Now they went off the nest or they've kind of gone off. He's went his way and now he's went into his bedroom or his sanctuary and he's going to stay there and he's going to pick up more hens. This is usually an older turkey a lot of times, not all the time, but this is usually an older turkey that's just going to stay in that one spot. How do you kill him? Got to use the you got to use the train you got to use the timber. But unlike a lot of uh, in cases like before where we can go around or go you know get in front, he's not moving. So now you got to go to him. You got to go to this turkey, and boy, that is hard, especially in a open situation. And sometimes you just can't do it. But if you if you're on national forest or maybe you're in a good timber situation or you know maybe in a heavenly uh, edge of the field and he's out there in the corner of a field and you can you can use the the, the edge of it and it's kind of thick this is where you got to slip and slide you got to get on your belly and you got to crawl you got to become like a navy seal you just you got to do whatever it takes to close the distance you can do this but it's hairy boy is it ever <laughs> hairy and you know sometimes it just don't work out sometimes you blow blow the hunt but you'll never know until you try because he's not coming to you you got to go to him. And sometimes it may take you two hours to go 100 yards. I've done it before. Sometimes it may, it just seems like it takes you forever to get 30 yards, but you're moving. You're on your belly. You're putting that gun easy up in front of you, and you're pretty much just pushing yourself. I look for laying down logs a lot of times in this situation. If there's a big log out there and he's on the other side of it down off the point or something, I know I'm getting close. I stay and I try to I try to keep that log as my concealment and I'm just moving. I'm not even up on my knees. I'm right on my belly. I'm, I'm just sliding to this turkey and I'm you know taking it really easy. And the closer I get to him, the more hairy it becomes. But he's not going anywhere. He's there. Don't worry. Don't worry. Unless he sees you and you blow him out of there and you're going to know it if you do. He's still there. And boy, you talking about heart pounded. It gets heart pounded. And then once you get up there, you know, 70, 80 yards, you got to really take it even easier. Look for the great, you know, look for a big size tree, kind of stay, keep them trees as your camouflage blocking, you know, blocking you. And sometimes you can crawl right into their bubble and them not even know it. It's tough, but this is the way you kill turkeys when they're like that. When you get up there, 
you know, when you a lot of times when you get up in a position, maybe you get 50 yards. And he, maybe you hear him down there spitting a drum and maybe just over the hill a lot of times. That's when sometimes you can set up and start your soft calling. You know, do them little clucks and purrs. Sometimes he may break and come. Sometimes he may. Sometimes you may even have to crawl that last 20 yards. It's tough. But you'll never know until you try. You just got to roll the dice. And I've killed a lot of old gobblers by slipping on them. And, but it's really tough. That's as a sanctuary turkey. And, he, that's, and, and the reason he's gobbling at you is just because he wants you to come to him. And sometimes you just got to do it. So if you learn turkey behavior, you'll become a lot more efficient turkey hunter. But you just got to understand why they're doing what they're doing a lot of times. And just by the way he's acting, that'll tell you how to hunt him. And that'll help you kill all three of these turkeys if you encounter them this coming spring. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please take a moment and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, because we have a lot of great turkey hunting content coming in the weeks to come and you don't want to miss any of it. Make sure to check out all of the links in the description, uh, springfevercustomcalls.com, where you can get my signature series box call and my signature series mouth calls, along with all the other great turkey calls available at springfevercustomcalls.com. Also, while you're over there, grab you a Dell Outdoors official classic t-shirt. It just helps us to continue doing what we're doing on the channel here. So make sure to get you a t-shirt. Also, check out my brand new online store. The link will be in the description where we're uh, weekly uh, bringing you new, new t-shirts, hoodies, neck gaiters, coffee mugs, a lot of things with our uh, Dell Outdoors uh, logo on it. So check that out as well and everything that you buy there just helps us uh, to keep doing what we're doing here. Check out SoSo -So Outdoors and check out Spring Fever Custom Calls like I've already said. Uh, check out their YouTube page also and subscribe to, to those fellas over there at Spring Fever and also SoSo -So Outdoors. Just a lot of great links below. Check them all out. Support uh, the channel here like I said with all your purchases and we will be seeing you shortly with another great video full of turkey hunting tips.